Well, hello again, and, and welcome to this midweek message from Myerstown Church of the Brethren. I'm Pastor Dennis, and today is July 29th, 2020. I want to share some thoughts with you today on the concept of looking ahead, and two scriptures I'd like to share with you. First of all is Proverbs 29, 18, and this is from the King James Version. Where there is no vision, the people perish. And the other is from Matthew 13, verses 31 and 32, and this is the New International Version. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch in its branches. Well, some words today about the concept of vision and its importance for the church. Last week in my pastor report at the church board meeting, I tried to plant a seed. I suggested that while now probably isn't the time to start a pastoral search process, it is the time for the church to be looking ahead and beginning an envisioning process. Asking questions like, where are we headed? What are God's plans for this church? Where do we want the church to be? What do we want it to look like in one year, five years, and how do we get there? You know, those few words from Proverbs 29, 18 say a lot. Most current translations of that verse, including the New King James, say something like this, where there is no revelation the people cast off restraint. That word revelation means an unveiling, a revealing, or a making known. In the case of scripture, it is the revealing and making known of God's words and purposes. And while the word vision doesn't necessarily carry the same meaning as revelation, for the church, developing a vision for the future certainly involves hearing God's word and unveiling God's hopes, dreams, and purposes for the church. Seeking that revelation from God is part of the process of envisioning. If a vision of where the church needs to be and go is not from God, it most likely will fail. Then, indeed, the people, the church, will cast off restraint the church will default to each individual's or various cliques within the church, their ideas, and the church will run from one idea or program to the next without any defined purpose or direction. When that happens, the church will eventually perish. Part of a process of envisioning involves looking at what is right about where the church is now. In other words, what are the church's strengths? What needs to be changed if the church is to move into a faithful and productive future? It involves listening for God's leading as to where God wants the church to be. Considering what resources we have available, both human and material, that will enable the church to move forward. And then finally, developing a plan to make it all happen. I know it can all sound somewhat overwhelming, especially in these days when so much in life is overwhelming. I understand. I understand completely. We don't need another thing added to our already full and stressful lives right now. But the longer the church meanders along without a vision for the future, the harder it will be to move ahead into the kind of future God wants for us. I think Jesus' parable of the mustard seed can be helpful when considering how we could develop a vision for the future. The mustard seed, the scripture says, is the smallest of all seeds. I don't think I've ever seen a mustard seed, but from doing some gardening over the years, I've seen some pretty small, tiny seeds. And from these tiny seeds grow some beautiful flowers and shrubs and, I guess, even trees. When we look forward toward the future, we don't need to develop an all-encompassing master plan, which no one will really read or really understand completely. We can start small, like that mustard seed. Think, think about that small mustard seed 
is that it becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. That small seed grows. It develops roots and stems and branches and eventually begins attracting birds to perch in its branches. As Myerstown Church of the Brethren looks to the future, we can start small. You know, over the last five to 10 years, a variety of smaller, maybe some poor decisions and incidents contributed to the decline of the church to where it is now. We can turn that around. We can start small, go one small step at a time, building on each step as we seek once more to grow into that tree which can attract birds to perch in its branches. In other words, new people who will make this their church home. It's not an impossible task. It will take three Ps to get there. Perseverance, prayer, and people. As I said in my sermon this past Sunday, there's so much good about Myerstown Church of the Brethren right now. Good people who are passionate about the church and a great facility just to name two. I'm willing to facilitate this visioning process getting started, but at some point it needs to be something that you as the Myerstown Church of the Brethren own. As I said earlier, these are tough times and we're all pretty much stressed to the limit right now. But I challenge each of you to pray about this. And if you sense God calling you to be a part of this envisioning team here at the church, let me or, or Dave Dubel, board chair, know. A good size group would be maybe five to seven people who represent a cross section of the church demographic. Yes, the last four and a half months have certainly been crazy. Frankly, I look forward to more craziness as we seek what God might have in store for his church in this place. I hope you'll join me and your brothers and sisters as we seek together what God has in mind for his church here in Myerstown. Would you pray with me? God, thank you for being with us through all these past months of craziness. Craziness in life in general, and craziness in the life of the church. In the midst of it all, we know that you have been with us and always will be with us. We acknowledge that we've not always been good and faithful stewards of what you've given us. We confess to sometimes treating one another in ways that reflect poorly on you and the church. Help us to let go of the past and eagerly look forward to the future you have in store for us. God bless the leaders of this church. Give them the patient endurance to lead us into the future. We seek your vision for this church. Open our minds and our eyes that we may capture that vision, that we will be Jesus' faithful disciples in this place. Speak into the hearts and minds of those you would call to serve this congregation. Give them responsive and willing hearts, I pray. Bless your church in this place, in Jesus' name, amen. Have a good remainder of your week, and I look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning. God bless.